This evening's job is disassembly of the two brake hubs. We've got the rear one, which is the smaller one, and the front one, which is obviously the large one. The front one has the complication that it has the speedometer drive gear in there. Um, so I'll pick my way through that slowly. Um, I think I'll do that one second, and I'll get a little bit of experience from the rear one. Interesting to know that the springs go from opposite sides, so they kind of go underneath the brake shoes. These are the original shoes that came with the bike, both front and rear. So I've never had to change these before. I can't see any seals, whether there should be one or not, I don't know, I'll have to check the manual. But that, I think, concludes the dismantling of this. This, I don't know if this comes out or not. For this particular piece, I'm not going to have powder coated, I'm going to paint this one. Time to dismantle the larger front brake. This has a little bit more complicated. We have a split pin that is holding down this washer. And again, just one arm on the split pin. That's the split pin removed. Then we have this washer. Okay, the way it's come out is the springs are attached across, which is fairly simple. Um, the hooks are coming up from the bottom. Whether that makes any difference or not, I don't know, but that's the way it is at the moment. front brake does squeal a bit, so I might need to um, rough these up a little bit, or possibly even replace them, but we'll see. For the time being, we'll hang on to this. It's weird, random bit of metal in the hub. I have no idea where that's come from, but I'm going to put that aside for now. Again, orientation of this I don't think is overly important at this stage to remember. It should set up when we, um, we do the brakes later. Come on. I think that one looks in. Little 
tweak. Okay, camera off, have a think about it, come back to it. Okay, I didn't catch it on the camera, I just, I accidentally took it off. So we had this spring on, oh, and that's falling out. Um, it, it sort of just took wiggling, I was having a good old look at it. I gave it a wiggle, and there's a, there's like a, a a section on here without any splines. I don't know if that will show up on the camera, but on here there's an area where there are no splines, and they kind of marry up with the with the uh, the split in the back of the um, fork. And it was just a bit of wiggling. I think it was just stiff, but it it just wiggled off, and then consequently the spring came off, and then this fell out the back. So. So yeah, that was it really. A bit of an anti-climax. Right, the next bit is to get the oil seal out of here. And I do need to replace this because I know the seal is not particularly good. I think it's pretty, pretty worn. But at the same time, I'm not entirely sure I can replace it yet. So I'm just going to try and get it out without killing it completely. But like I say, I know it's worn, so it doesn't need changing. Bit of the film will be fast forwarded. There we go. One seal. I do not think that has been changed in a while. There's a screw here. It looks pretty mangled. That I think holds the speedo drive in. Ah. I'm not entirely sure what was holding that in. Still not sure what's holding that in. Yeah. It's loose, whatever it is. Curious. Rotates and rotates and rotates. Almost like, almost like it's threaded. There we go. Not entirely sure what was holding that in. I'm not even sure if it's original. It looks like a cut down screw from something else. That's worrying. Right. It's not insurmountable. I kind of think it's holding the speedo drive in. I also think something else is holding the speedo drive in. Consult the manual, or will I just go ahead and have a stab at it? Again, I don't want to damage anything. Still not sure what that screw was actually physically doing. Odd. Is that the screws? No. Nope. In here there's like, um, what do you call it, like a bevel gear maybe, or a, a worm gear? Worm gear probably is the right, right idea for it. And that is driven off the um, the brake uh, uh, drum, has um, like a, a, a tooth gear that, that engages with this and causes it to turn. Um, 
so I think this is fixed in place and I think the rod that goes through it probably locks it. In here there's what appears to be a, a rod but I don't want to force it. So it could be seized in there through water or it could be somehow held with a grub screw that I can't see. I kind of thought the screw that was in there was holding it in but now I begin to think that maybe a bit of that screw still remains. Curious. I'm also starting to wonder if it's necessary to take it out given that I'm going to paint it. It's a bit annoying though. Time to consult the manual. I've consulted the manual and so far it's not been much help. Um, did highlight a couple of things though. One is... I'm going to do that now. One is the speedometer drive which was up in the shed. Um, should have two washers on it on the back here. They're missing. Oh no, one is there. I wonder if the other one is. Should have brought my magnet down. <laughs> it's being tricky. Okay, so we've got one washer. That's good. Is there another one in there? No. Not as far as I can tell. So we have one washer in there and one missing washer. So we may need to source another washer because that sits underneath there. Um, but the uh, manual is not helping me much with the um, removal of the speedo drive. Which is slightly annoying. In fact, on their exploded diagram they seem to admit it's omit its existence. Right, I'm having issues and I don't think it's incompetence this time. This speedo drive here um, connects via a rod with a flat end to, uh, to it that drives the speedo cable. This seems to rotate on a bearing which forms part of the shaft that ends up driving the speedo cable and I suspect that in order to remove this you have to remove the shaft out the centre of this um, which then um, allows this to fall out into this cut, casting um, which would make sense in terms of assembly however that particular shaft that runs through there is in hard um, there's only so much force I can exert using pliers before I feel like I'm in danger of damaging it um, so by that um, reasoning I intend to leave this in place. Um, it's working, it spins, um, I have no issues with it. This particular piece, like the rear brake hub, is not going off to be powder coated. Um, I was intending on painting this piece. It's not ideal, I had hoped to get the whole thing apart, but by the same rationale I don't want to end up destroying it. Um, I do have a few questions about this which I'm not entirely sure what's what and again the manual is of no use to me whatsoever but there there is a hole here which clearly should be used for something and there's a nut here which again uh, seems to have no purpose um, so I, I, I'm lost again the manual doesn't seem to explain why it's there so um, I will continue digging around and maybe something obvious will come up. Also according to manual there should be a seal here and I'm not sure if it's in there or not so I'm just going to have a quick poke at that. Incidentally I worked out that this is intended to hold the speedo drop cable in place although it was non-functioning because the speedo cable could be pulled out by hand um, without disengaging that screw and the screw itself is a right mess so that might be something I need to look into. Definitely have a seal of sorts there. Um, it feels like it's made of some sort of rubber material. Yep, there we go. And out it comes. It might be felt actually. I don't know if replacements are available, but I will look into it. Um, and I suspect the idea is to stop oil ingress in, or grease ingress into the brake itself. Now, I'm not sure whether to remove that or not, or whether to leave it in place. I cannot see what it's doing. There's like half a nut on the inside. It's almost like 
there was a reason for a hole there, but they decided to blank it off. Curious. Perhaps this same um, front hub is used on another motorcycle and um, uh, they, they blanked it off for a reason. As I say, there seems to be no, no reference to it in the manual whatsoever. Anyway, that concludes the disassembly as far as I can guess it of both brake hubs. Um, so, yeah.